Radio Sega. Polygirl was a game that initially fell under my radar. Those of you around at the time may remember our Sage 2018 coverage on YouTube, where I was in charge of checking out the greatest 2D games to be offered in the Expo, and Polyroll coverage was nowhere to be seen on the channel for a reason. It's rather silly now, but my memories of the game were being turned away by the art style, which is such a frivolity to get up in arms about, but 8-bit indie games have been done to death, how can this be any different from any other simple platformer I've played? So I didn't touch it, and I probably wouldn't have done if it wasn't for the developers getting in touch with us. Why bring all this up? I'm making up for lost time. Polyroll is a game that gets so much right for me, I wish I'd paid more attention to it throughout its development cycle and hadn't been judgmental over something so minor. After all that said and done, I'm Green Vaporate, and on behalf of Radio Sega, this is my review of Polyroll. Since it ties most games together, why don't we start with the story? Kaiser Kiwi has kidnapped your friends and it's up to you to stop him and rescue your buddies. That's it. You'd think it being me I'd try to pick apart this story for everything it's worth, but not this time round. Whereas a story this simple is baffling in AAA titles such as more recent Mario games, this actually works in Polyroll's favour. We're here, this is why we're in the world, let's run through some levels. For such a small and simple game, expanding the story any more than this would feel unnecessary, and Polyroll has no idea what the word bloat means in any context, so we might as well just move past that. The beauty in the gameplay of the title comes down to its simplicity. The levels are short and snappy, but the game is aware of this and makes sure to spread all the best obstacles over the course of the world. A lot of games have a habit of feeling like they're only just getting started as they end, but considering a lot of these levels are only one minute long, they have a beginning, what feels like a meaty middle, and an end, all jam-packed into such a small package. This, as hinted at earlier, stops the game from feeling bloated, as why stretch out levels or worlds longer than they need to be? For that matter, why stretch out the game longer than it needs to be? This game isn't afraid to spit in the face of other games of this style, because people always mention the phrase of quality over quantity, but few games actually stick to that as well as this one does. It's a title that's not afraid to say that other 2D platformers are too long for the sake of not angering a customer who's just spent all their hard-earned money on the title. To hell with that, I say, as long as the game is fun and memorable, and both boxes here are ticked for me. The obvious comparison that everyone will immediately go with for the gameplay is Sonic the Hedgehog, and of course, that was my first knee-jerk reaction too. Not that my thoughts have changed, mind you, but over the course of playing I started to notice something that I never thought I'd see in a speed-based 2D indie platformer, and that is that the game appears to be pretty heavily inspired by the Master System and Game Gear titles. This shocked me at first, but the comparisons drew larger and larger in my mind as it went on. This is a complete breath of fresh air, as over the last 10 years we've seen so many fan games and original titles ripping and stealing stealing cues from the original Sonic trilogy, so seeing a game riff on the ideas presented in their demakes is actually something quite special, and once again, I'm all for it. Nothing to me strikes up this comparison more than when the game teaches you how to ricochet off walls. Immediately in my mind, I flash back to the Sonic 1 8-bit special stages, which brought the awesome memories flooding back. But also the take on the concept here is brilliant, adding a fresh new twist to a concept that's already pretty unique in of itself. Let's go on to an important topic, death. It's inevitable, nowhere more so than Polyroll. That's why it thankfully makes the decision to scrap the archaic live system that platformers prey on and instead chooses to make the challenge down to the level design itself rather than to a limiting number hanging over your head. It's a fantastic design choice and it baffles me that this is the standard for indie titles, yet AAA titles use the outdated system as a get out of jail free card for challenge. Music is an important topic here for us at Radio Sega, duh. So let's take some time to focus on Polyroll's music. While I was writing up notes during my playthrough, my initial notes weren't actually all that positive. The first few tracks very much sounded like your run-of-the-mill mid-2000s flash game, which is a cool aesthetic, but I wasn't really feeling the bopping chip tunes that I was expected based on the presentation of the rest of the title. I'm glad I stuck with it though, because not even one song later and I came to regret my initial thoughts. Polyroll has got some great tracks scattered throughout the journey, and while I personally believe that not all of them fit within their environment, the majority are catchy and memorable, something that is rare for me to say towards NES-style chip tune, as much as it isn't really my cuppa and a lot of these 8-bit indies using the same sound style can get a bit samey. In most cases I prefer a grungy C64 sound any day, but Andrew Riley did a great job of getting me to put aside my preferences to jam out some simple yet effective classically inspired tracks. Polyroll is a game that caught me off guard in a multitude of ways. On one hand, anyone can see the Sonic inspiration a mile off, but the title has so many twists and tricks up its sleeve that unlike many titles inspired by the franchise, it truly stands on its own two feet as a short but sweet title and to the point, a budget indie game. Considering its low price point and just how easy it is to pick up and play, I can safely recommend you nab yourself Polyroll. It might not blow you away in certain aspects, but the charming visuals and genius level design are anything unable to be experienced either on Steam or the Switch as of now. Thanks once again to Shiny Dolphins and Spicy Jarrah Games for providing us with two copies of the game. You guys rock! Radio Sega.